Well, hi there. I'm here today with a Rediard slider, which is probably the most common pet turtle in the United States, and probably for a long time was the most common pet reptile in the United States. And to be perfectly honest, Rediard sliders are very, very popular for some pretty good reasons. Uh, they're really pretty. They've got a lot of pretty colors and patterns to them. They're very, very interactive. Uh, you know, they very much engage with you. They're interested in what you're doing. They know that you're the bringer of food. They're intelligent and they're very, very hardy. The truth is that red-eared sliders were some of the first reptiles that, that I ever kept. I, I, had, I had some garter snakes, and then I think it was red-eared sliders and common snapping turtles and painted turtles. I kept a lot of, of turtle species, and, and red-eared sliders were a lot of fun, and I had them for a long time, pretty much all growing up. I had red-eared sliders. But you might have noticed that they were not on our list of the top five reptiles for beginners, and they also weren't on our list of five of the best pet turtles. And this was no accident. So, there's a big question, and that is, is the red-eared slider a bad pet reptile? And, if it's not, is it the best pet reptile for you? To help you figure this out, we're gonna rate the red-eared slider based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability, shall we? In a lot of ways, holding a red-eared slider is kind of like holding a hamburger that sometimes kicks at you with pointy claws. They've got... Uh, they're actually great. And, and for that reason, we give the red-eared slider a score of 4 out of 5 for handleability. They do have a pretty nasty bite. Uh, you got this beak and it is fairly sharp and it can potentially take a chunk out of you depending on how big your red-eared slider happens to be. And they get a lot bigger than this little hamburger. The largest red-eared slider that I had growing up had a carapace length. So there's, there's two parts to the turtle shell. There's the top and the bottom. The top is called the carapace. The bottom is called the plastron. And her carapace length was over 11 inches front to back. So she was a pretty good sized turtle. This one is a male. And you can tell males from females in a couple of ways once they start to get a little larger. When they're babies, I don't know how to tell the difference. But when they get to be a little larger, males have much longer claws on their forelimbs, and their tail is much, much longer, with their, their cloacal opening coming kind of partway, like almost halfway down the tail, whereas the female tail is much smaller, and the cloacal opening is more at the base, and then the claws on their front legs are very similar in length to the claws on their back legs. So that's how you can tell a male from a female. Females get considerably larger than males, uh, so males are going to stay smaller, which can make males, in a lot of circumstances, a better choice as a pet. But if you have a big one, the bite is potentially worse than with a small one. Another thing about red-eared sliders that you will discover as you keep them is there's a decent chance they'll pee on you anytime you're holding them. Uh, this is a freshwater turtle, and animals that live in fresh water tend to pee often, all the time. And the reason for this is because uh, animals have cells that have water in them and they've also got salt inside. And salt doesn't really travel through the cell membrane so much, but water will. And it'll balance, based on concentration gradients, it'll balance out, if, if left to its own devices, the amount of water to salt ratio inside the cell to what's outside the cell. Well, fresh water has a lot less salt in it than do your cells per unit water. And so water naturally flows into the cells of freshwater organisms. In order to deal with this, they have to be able to pull that water back out and they pee it out and freshwater organisms pee like all the time. And that's completely different than what happens with saltwater animals. Saltwater animals, there's a lot more salt in the water outside than inside, and so it tends to pull the water out of their cells. And so saltwater animals tend to be drinking all the time and peeing very, very rarely. But this is a freshwater turtle. They pee all the time, and you will discover this as you pick them up, especially if they're not super accustomed to being handled. They'll probably pee on you about every time you pick them up. They're also, as a water turtle, often wet when you pick them up, which makes them kind of slippery. And like I said before, they'll be kicking at you with their little, with their little legs. And 
As a result, they can slip out of your hand and they will break if they fall too far onto something too hard. Uh, the, the shell can break and the shell is made out of their spine and rib cage. And so y you open things up, it's terrible injuries if they break that shell. It's not trivial. But the truth is, if you know how to hold a turtle, uh, turtles have fairly limited mobility. And so, you know, if you hold far enough back on the shell, most turtles, I'm not talking about snapping turtles or soft-shelled turtles right now, but most turtles can't reach too far over their carapace to bite you. So right here where I've got him, he can't bite me. And where I'm supporting him right now, usually when I just pick one up, I pick it up in the sides and they will be kicking at you. But if, if you support him sort of like this, they can't even kick you and he's just sort of free swimming in the air. So turtles are actually very easy to handle if you know how to handle them. And as long as they're not too wet and slippery. You know, and the, the truth is, this is a turtle that, once you know how to hold the turtle, is very, very easy to handle. As long as you're not averse to possibly getting peed on a little, but it's mostly just water. I'm gonna let him swim now. I'd just like to pause for just a moment to say thank you to all of our patrons at Patreon who make so much possible for us. Uh, not long ago, we were on the island of Niue, which is an island that eats things, and it ate our sound equipment. If you open it up, it was just full of rust after a few days on Niue. And the thing is, I mean, we need that sound equipment in order to do things like go to Tinley, go to uh, Nerd, where we're going soon, go to Niue and Australia, New Zealand, and even our reptile room, and to bring you anything you can hear. And our equipment was eaten alive. And we are so thankful for our patrons at Patreon that allowed us to not only get that equipment in the first place, but also get a replacement so that we can continue to bring you this kind of content. Thank you. When it comes to care, we give the Red Eared Slider a score of three out of five. The, the truth is these turtles are very, very hardy. And as a result, they can potentially live a long time with either limited care or incorrect care. They just can handle it. But the truth is that's not what you want to do. And for an animal that's no larger than our red-eared sliders, which is gonna be somewhere ranging between about this size and about a foot in carapace length, they actually require quite a lot of care. For starters, this enclosure, which is just fine for him to swim in for a few minutes here, is not at all appropriate in size for a red-eared slider, even one this size, and he's a pretty little guy. You're gonna need a really, big aquarium and that aquarium is going to need to have a lot of water in it and that water is going to be need to be heated and it's going to need to be filtered because they're kind of messy animals and you don't want to have to be picking up a giant aquarium and dumping it out every couple days that's going to be really difficult to do so it's going to have to be filtered this means that you're going to need to be cleaning filters on a regular basis and replacing filter cartridges. It also means you're gonna to need to do partial water changes, just a lot of the husbandry associated with keeping a large fish tank, because these guys live in a large fish tank. It's not as easy as that because these guys don't live their entire lives in the water. They also need to be able to go on land and dry out completely and bask under a heat lamp and with UV. This means that you need UV lights and basking lights in addition to heaters for the water and filters for the water. So you kind of have the worst of both an aquatic organism and a terrestrial organism. And as I mentioned, for a water turtle, these guys get pretty big and they're pretty darn active. And as a result, they need a really, really enormous enclosure. Uh, if you're planning to keep them like the turtles in Rocky, you're doing it wrong. As a result of having this huge enclosure full of water, the enclosure is gonna be big, it's gonna be heavy, it's gonna be complex, and it's gonna be high maintenance. It's a pain in the neck. And this is pretty much the reason that they aren't on any of our lists. That said, the rest of their care is fairly simple. Uh, you don't need to provide a water bowl or misting or anything like that, just water changes. And they're easy to feed. They like food very much. They do pretty well on a staple of, of a, a prepared aquatic turtle diet. Uh, in addition to that, you can supplement things like insects, and fish. I wouldn't use an abundance of goldfish due to the fact that they're high in the enzyme thymine, which you need thymine and this breaks down thymine. So you don't want too much goldfish in the diet. Um, also things like crustaceans, crayfish are great. Uh, vegetables, 
some vegetation in the diet is really, really good for these guys. Just kind of a broad diversity of things. They'll pretty much eat it and they'll come up and beg you for it and they will eat it right out of your fingers. If you do that right, just don't do that wrong because it hurts. When it comes to hardiness, as mentioned before, these guys are hardy. We give them a score of five out of five. Truth is, I mean, these guys are just solid. They're just solid as can be, which is why a lot of the time they're not given at all appropriate care. It's because they can handle it for a long time, maybe even years. However, given proper care, they should live a heck of a lot longer than that. Decades and decades. When it comes to availability, we give probably the most popular and common reptile of the last 70 years in the United States a score of five out of five. They're almost too available. They're probably not quite as too available as they were a couple of generations ago when they were available at every dime store. You know, they were not too much bigger than a dime and you know, every kid got them and had them for as long as they lived and then got new ones. They were just disposable toys, but they're still very, very available. Most pet stores that carry reptiles have these guys. This one comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is one of our favorite pet stores, and they carry reptiles, and unsurprisingly, they carry red eared sliders. In fact, you know, it's one of the few pet stores I've been to that carries a lot of reptiles and doesn't always have red eared sliders in stock. They carry a broad diversity of cool turtles. And so, you know, I, I wasn't actually sure if they would have a red eared slider in stock because usually they've only got like one. And I think that's cool that they're giving you more options than just red eared sliders or a different red eared slider. Uh, these guys are also widely available at expos and online. So if you can't find one locally, you can find one. The truth is, I mean, there are far more red-eared sliders available than there are people who are right for red-eared sliders. And for this reason, I'm going to add one place that you could find one, which I would say is the very best place to get one if you want a red-eared slider, and that is your local reptile rescue. They're going to have buckets of them. So if you want a red-eared slider, get a red-eared slider, just get one that needs a home. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the red-eared slider a score of three out of five. The turtle itself will range somewhere from free to very reasonable. Though the morphs of red eared sliders, which there are some, and some of them are pretty spectacular, those can be pretty expensive. But if you want just a, a normal colored red eared slider, which they're all beautiful, they're very, very affordable. It's that darned enclosure that's gonna be very expensive. They need a very large aquarium that's designed to hold water. And, and that means that most reptile aquariums aren't going to be right for a red eared slider. And this is because the type, the glass that they use for uh, terrestrial reptile terraria, it, the glass is too thin to handle the sort of water pressure that you're going to have in like a 75 plus gallon tank full of water. It, you know, it would just bust out the sides after a while. You don't want that. That's the worst. You're also going to need a filter and it, probably a canister filter would be best. And the reason for this is because you need to keep the water level a little bit lower. There are some turtle tanks that allow you to hook an over the side filter sort of right through the wall of the aquarium and those would work just fine. It's just those tend to be like 20 gallon long and smaller and that's just not going to work for an adult red eared slider at all. So you're, you're probably going to need just a, a regular 75, 125 plus gallon glass aquarium and then you'll use a canister filter because an over the side filter uh, it wouldn't be able to pull the water up and leave the water low enough. They'd, you'd need the water level too high. But with the canister filter you can get the water level considerably lower. And the reason you need this to be lower is because they need to bask, and if they're basking right at the surface of the aquarium, they're probably going to crawl out. If they crawl out and fall, they can get seriously injured or lost, and you don't want either of those things. In addition to that filter, you're going to need a heater for a large aquarium. So a, lar a, a big aquarium heater that you're going to have to run. You're going to need, as we mentioned, a basking platform of some sort. This can range from a really large log that's not going to rot in the water to a lot of the uh, artificial basking platforms made for aquatic turtles. Both of those can work. Just make sure that they can't jump out of the aquarium when they're up on it. You're also going to need 
appropriate lamps for them when basking. This is going to mean basking lights for heat uh, and UVB basking lights. You could probably get away with a mercury vapor bulb. Uh, that might be a good way to do two in one, and I would recommend that, but I would actually also recommend a tube UV light as well. So it's just expensive lighting in addition to a pretty expensive aquarium. And then things like turtle diet, those are actually pretty affordable. And we'll have links to all this stuff down in the description, so check it out there. Overall though, the Red Yard Slider actually gets a pretty terrific score. It gets a score of four out of five. Uh, but this doesn't mean that I necessarily recommend them. In fact, I would say I don't recommend them to most people. But really only because there are so many options that are similar, but so much more reasonable and just as rewarding. I'm not saying that red-eared sliders are terrible pets. They're just expensive pets that need a big enclosure. And generally, because they're such inexpensive turtles to buy, people don't provide that to them. And so I'm hoping that if you decide that a red-eared slider is for you, you're planning to give them everything that they need. And if red-eared sliders were the only water turtles that existed, I would say, yeah, they're, they're probably worth it. But the truth is, they're not the only water turtles that exist. And there are a lot of other water turtles that are just quite a bit smaller than our red-eared sliders. And because they're smaller, they're just a lot more reasonable to keep. And that's why I would just recommend those far ahead of a red-eared slider. But if you just have to have the turtles from Rocky and you're okay with the fact that they need an expensive and complex enclosure and you're okay with the fact that Cuff and Link, the two turtles from Rocky that Sylvester Stallone still owns to this day, are right now 45 years old and going strong, then red-eared sliders are easy to find and rewarding turtles. And they just might be the best pet turtles for you. As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. You like that better?